This is Q&A with Prof. A, the Ibato K Doc Bato educational series for medical students. The question thrown at us today is, Prof. A, what are the different body compartments? Always remember the 60, 40, 20, 5 rule, which means that the 60% of your weight is water. 40% of your weight is intracellular, while 20% of your weight is extracellular, and 5% is plasma volume. Such that, for example, a 70 kilogram man has 60% or 0.6 times 70 will have 42 liters of total body water. The indicator dilution method is used to measure the different body compartments. This is important to remember that certain compounds are used to measure these compartments. For example, antipyrene is for total body water, your inulin is for ECF, while your plasma volume, they use albumin. We all know that the ICF and the ISF cannot be measured, so we derive it from the formula of ICF is equal to total body water minus ECF, and your ISF is equal to ECF minus plasma volume. The cell membrane separates your ECF from your ICF, while your plasma volume is separated from your interstitial fluid by your capillary membrane. And as you can see, the most common cation in the ECF is sodium, while the most common cation in the intracellular fluid is potassium such that if potassium goes out of the system, it will give you a lot of trouble. As you can see also that your plasma volume has the same components as your interstitial fluid, such that water can easily pass through the capillary membrane. To understand the relationship of plasma osmolarity and volume, we use Darrow-Yanet diagrams. The three-step approach to fluid shift problems are Number one, construct a normal Darrow-Yanet diagram. Number two, you disturb the ECF in terms of whether it is an increase of volume or decrease or an increase of osmolarity or decrease of osmolarity. Then, if an osmotic gradient exists, shift the water accordingly to obliterate the gradient. For this is an example of a normal state Darrow-Yanet diagram with the ICF as pink and the ECF as blue. Dengue fever is an example of isotonic plasma volume loss, such that if you lose a lot of fluid, it is only the ECF that is affected. While infusion of hypertonic fluids like 3% sodium chloride or seawater, we all know that the very high sodium content will drive the water out of the plasma volume. It will increase your osmolarity. Then you have an osmotic gradient. Water will flow from your ICF to the ECF, leading to a decrease in volume for ICF, but an increase in osmolarity. What will happen to the cells? They will shrink or shrivel up. Infusion of hypotonic fluids like distilled water, D5IMD, D5.3% sodium chloride, or half normal sodium chloride, will lower down your osmolarity. Therefore, a gradient exists such that water will flow now from your ECF to the ICF. This will lower down the osmolarity of your intracellular fluid compartment and will increase the volume of the ICF. The cells now will balloon or swell to the point of rupture, leading to a form of hemolytic crisis or hemolytic anemia. These are the different Darrow-Yanet diagram relationships. As you can see, letter B is an example of pure water loss while letter C is an example of pure sodium loss. For more high-yield information on renal physiology, don't forget to click the subscribe button.